morning to you. It's Saturday, 11 o'clock, the 22nd of July 2017. Welcome along to the show this morning, boys and girls. And I'm just sitting there. You know I'm a messy... Pa- it's ever so messy in here. Uh, you might be able to see... Yes, you can. Can you see all this stuff in here? Look at it all. It's just... And it's the same in front of me. You can't see in front of me. I've got stuff in front of me. Papers to the left. Pa- look, look at this. Look at this lot here. And I've to- told you so many times. Look at all this. Waiting to be dealt with. And that is this room, okay? And I've got phones over there, boxes of stuff, glasses. There's an electric toothbrush over there. (laughs) Honestly, I kid you not, plugged in over there. There's a Dalek. You've seen the Dalek, haven't you? There's a Dalek here. Hang on. And it's just, it's just all over the place. Here, there's one of my Daleks. Exterminate. Exterminate. Now, apparently... Daleks were supposed to be dis- designed uh, on the Nazis, the German Nazis. I don't see how, I don't know, I mean, does that look like a German Nazi to you? Hang on, hi Hitler, hi Hitler, it could be, couldn't it? <laughs> anyway, so I've got all these bits and pieces here, and I'm just while, while the music was on there, I was looking around, I've got a shelf up there with nothing on it. And I could be putting half this stuff up there, including my, my giant playing cards, which I bought the other day, as you well know. My new giant playing cards. I don't know what to do with them. I just saw them and I thought I'd buy them. So that's it. I've got my giant playing cards. I've still got the stick in here if anyone wants a good caning later. Okay, if any of you have been bad, then you will be caned later. Yes, I'm hoping to be employed by the... Um, uh, the educational authorities across the country to come and beat bad children because that's the only way to deal with them. Beat them, dear. Drag them into the street and beat them in front of other classes. Then they won't be naughty anymore. I've got this shelf up here and there's nothing on it. How stupid am I? Are you a messy person? Are you a bit of a messy person? Huh? Oh, I can't be doing tidy up. My mate is complete opposite to me. If you go on a sit on his settee, I hardly go round there anymore because I'm fucking messing things up. Plus, he watches crap telly. Him, him and his boyfriend, they watch rubbish television. Love Island, Big Brother. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. I watch all that. Oh, it goes on and on. You know, and, and the mad housewives of Bracknell and Orange County and Cheshire. And Lo- if we had a mad housewives of London, that'd be good, wouldn't it, eh? Because they're all mad in London. You've only got to see that the way they drive around. Not just the women, the men as well. The driving is worse and worse, isn't it? Let's say hello to some early people, some early adopters. Early adopters are with us on the show this morning. Good morning to Zach Thompson. Good morning, Zach. Long time since I saw your little face appear on here, sir. Good morning, Zach. Elaine's there, who is here for the whole live show today, Elaine. Will you manage it, darling? Can you manage to stay for a whole show? How anyone can sit there and listen to me wittering on for an hour or so is is frankly beyond me. I cannot lie to you, Elaine. I'm thinking of doing something else. I'm going to ask your your questions about that. Ask your opinions about this in a minute. Uh, Joey's there. Good morning, Joey. I haven't seen you a week. I thought you were dead. I'm so glad you're not. We can't afford to you lose viewers and listeners on this program. God knows there's few enough of you as it is. Hardly anyone there at all. Good morning, the lovely Diane. Oh, you never let me down, do you, Diane? You with that beautiful black hair coming down the sides of your face there. The lovely Diane is there. Good morning, Diane. Uh, let's see. Gustav's there. Good morning, Gustav. Oh, he's still there, darling. God knows how you got home last night. Oh, dear, he was wrecked last night. Although being chatted up by someone quite nice at one point in a pair of shorts, weren't you? I don't think I didn't see. Although I have to say, some of your choices of people that you talk to in there sometimes leaves a lot to be desired, really. I mean, do you find it all goes wrong when when you tell them that you've got a flat on the White City estate? Is that when it goes wrong? They kind of change it. They say, oh, I'm just going to the toilet and they don't come back again. Is that right, Gustav? Hmm? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Gustav says, I'm looking very refreshed this morning. Have you had your weekly wash? No, I haven't, actually. I haven't had a wash, and I haven't brushed my teeth either yet today. Do you know, someone in there last night, it was, it was Duke. Do you know Duke? Young Chris, who sits at the end of the bar, usually on his own. 
And all the pe- all the older people gather around him, trying to get off with him. Have you noticed that? Young Chris. He said I had garlic breath last night. I mean, it was at least 10 hours from when I had my over garlic food. Is that a correct expression? My over garlic food. <laughs> to the point where I went right up to his face. Because <sighs> as soon as someone tells me something like that, I just do it even more. You know, Hello. <laughs> How are you today? I am very well. Thank you very much. (laughs) Because I'm putting too much garlic in my food at the moment for some reason. I don't know why I'm doing it. I buy the frozen garlic. I just open the packet and pour the whole lot in. It's so much. I measure a little bit out. Oh, no, just put the whole lot in and be done with it. That's the best thing to do. Um, Ray wants me to get the cards out. Did you see them cut the cards? Chance to go for the car, maybe. Do you want to go for the car, Ray? Do you want to go for the car? <laughs> Here's my giant playing cards. Look at this. There was a king, a queen. <laughs> They're a bit too... I don't know how you'd shuffle such a pack of cards. Oh, hang on. Well, I mean, like that, but they're not really shuffled, are they? Right. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to shuffle these cards, right? I'm going to shuffle these cards, okay? Let me just make a little space here. Let's do something with you this morning. Gonna shuffle these cards, okay? I'm gonna do a trick now. I'm gonna do a trick. You ready for this trick? Do a card, right? Right. I'm not looking now, okay? You can see I'm not looking. Promise you, I'm not looking, right? I'm gonna have to stop somewhere, right? I've stopped there. Right. Hang on a minute. Where's my mic gone? Can you hear me? Yeah. Right. So, can you see that card there, right? Whatever that card is, okay? Can you see that? Yes? Right, going to turn that around. Right. And put that there. Okay? Did you remember what that card was? Remember what that card was. And I'll come back to that a little bit later on. You'll be very impressed. You'll be very impressed with this. Um... Good morning to Emily Kent. Good morning, Emily. Is this the first time you've joined us this morning, Emily? Welcome to our little show. Just a little bit of fun we have most mornings here on United Kingdom Talk, live from the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire. Yes, Uh, Vectis is there. Can only manage five minutes today. Oh, really? Is that right? Dear me. Five minutes? Well, I'm disappointed at that. Disappointed. Good morning, Elaine, who enjoys listening to me wittering on. I know you do, Elaine, darling. Carl's there. Uh, jo- Joey says, how can you think I'm dead? I try my best to make your live shows. Well, you haven't been there this week, have you, my love? The best is not good enough. I remember a boy in the classroom when I was at school, London Oratory I went to, and um, he'd, he'd done this work. And Now, who was it? Was it the maths teacher? I can't remember who it was now. One of the teachers, and he's and he's, he's got this boy out. And he said, what is this work? Because in those days, the teachers like to embarrass you in front of all the other children. By whatever means possible. The history teacher, she was the... Oh, she was vile. Mr. Wayne, her name was. She was horrible, this woman. And I hate her to this day. She was... And she was useless. Basically, she'd say, OK, I want you to read chapter one and two tonight. Tomorrow, I will ask you questions. So and we'd start the class and the front, OK, read and stand up. Tell me about Massapotamus or where, I don't know where this place was, dear. Someone in Roman times, it was. Tell me about, and I'd stand up and I couldn't do it. I could not pick up a book and learn from it and then, like, you know, digest the information and reiterate it all out again in front of the teacher. She was our, and she was vile. She was so strict. Didn't like her at all. Really didn't. She, I think she sent a few people down for the cane before as well, to be honest. Yes. Anyway, going back to Joey. Yes, you haven't been there at all this morning. I have noticed, dear. Notes have been taken from you. Good morning, Carl. Hope you're well. Gustav says, to be honest, you did honk last night. I thought it was because you were snogging Lawrence. <laughs> I don't think that'll ever happen somehow. And um, White City Estate, that's in Ealing. How dare you? I'm not the one that sounds council, lovey. No, you don't. You just look stupid most of the time, Gustav. I have to say, darling. I do have to say that. All right, my love. <laughs> God's sake. By the way, have you had breakfast this morning yet? 
I've had a very nice breakfast this morning, which consisted of baked beans, fried onions in fry light, and two lovely fried eggs in fry light, a cup of tea, and of course my regular morning tablets. Everyone over 50 has to take tablets, that's true. Well, how old was your breakfast? That is the question. In this morning's super soar away sun, it says, ever been lured? I think one or two of you have been lured before, haven't you? I'm hoping to be lured at some point, you know, walking along a street. That is what I hope happens. I'm walking along a street, perhaps along some bushes, and suddenly you see a finger come out of the bushes like that. I'm hoping one day that happens to me. <laughs> Anyway, have you ever been lured into a supermarket by the delicious smell of freshly baked bread? Well, not in Audi, you wouldn't, would you, darling? Not in Audi. And I've got to say, what's happening to all the bread and cakes counters in these supermarkets? They're all being replaced by sushi bars. How disgusting. Oh, how can anyone sit there and eat raw fish? They have a vegetarian sushi as well now. How does that work? Because well, I don't eat fish. Don't eat anything that's got a face, my love. How does that work? Vegetarian sushi. I'm not quite sure how that works. But it's a, a lot of these places, uh, certainly in, in my local Waitrose here, we have the bread and cakes counter. It was shifted. It was shifted into basically a normal aisle, replaced by a sushi bar. Oh, and there they all are with their hairnets on, a little face mask, wrapping up bits of dead, uncooked fish. Disgusting, dear. I mean, that don't, don't you can't smell that walking around the shop. Good job you can't, because there wouldn't be any customers in there, would there? When they used to have a lovely bread, and you could smell the bread, and the cakes were all out all gone. All gone. Pushed onto little side shelves within the main area of the supermarket, rather than their own little section with the happy, smiling faces of the little fat ladies behind there. They were always nice. Little fat ladies working behind the, um, uh, behind the, uh, bread counters. And, uh, hello, what would you like today? And, uh, I don't know, what. Oh, why don't you try an apple pie? And you'd have an apple pie. She said, go and have one of those as well. And you put a donut on there and put it in a little box, put a little label on and off you go. Wonderful. Not now, just the sushi people. And they never smile. They're miserable as sin. Well, they might be smiling. I don't know. They've got the face mask on, haven't they? Wrapping up these nasty little things. Oh, they must stink when they get home, mustn't they? Oh, can you imagine that? That fishy smell that wanders around all the time. I know some of you experienced that from people before when you've lifted back those bed covers, haven't you, darling? Oh, that fishy smell. <laughs> oh, bleh. oh, it's disgusting. Anyway, back to this. Uh, don't let your nose fool you, says the sun this morning. Those fresh loaves could be up to a year old. Really? This is what the sun says this morning. Supermarkets use all sorts of techniques to cut costs, but keep staple foods on the shelves. Um, here are some of the key groceries that might be older than you think. How old do you think apples are? Apples could be up to one year old. Well, I don't know how they do that, love. I mean, I've got a little apple tree in the garden. It don't do much, to be honest. It don't do much. But they, the apples actually seem to go rotten while they're growing. How do they keep apples fresh? Many apples are treated with Smart Fresh, a produce enhancer that pauses the fruit's development. Oh, I need some of that for my face. <laughs> can can you put smart fresh on your face? Eh? Hey, uh, Gustav, that's something for you. Put some of that smart fresh on your face. Mate, might you might might you might might make you look a little bit younger, dear. Huh? <laughs> potatoes. How old are those potatoes lurching around in your cupboard? Up to one year old potatoes. Look at this. Uh, from November to July. Potatoes are often treated with chemicals to avoid shortages over the Christmas period. You see, they always say you should wash stuff. And I must admit, for some reason recently, I've got out of the habit of washing fruit and veg before I cook it. 
and you should always do that. Even strawberries, you know, look at those strawberries. Oh, they've been washed in a machine. Yeah, maybe so. But strawberries, for example, a little animal may have weed on one of them, mightn't they? And other people that, you know, go around in bushes and things like that. People do do that. They, they hide in bushes. They live in bushes. They might be defecating on those strawberries. And you're about to eat them. Make sure you wash them first, lovey. We can't have any defecation on those strawberries. Awful. Fish. Your fish could be up to two years old. <coughs> no wonder it smells so bad. Fresh fish is kept on ice from the second it leaves the boat. Always look for a previously frozen sticker. So if it says previously frozen, could be two years old, that fish. It still looks all right to me. We need to put some of these chemicals or start taking tablets to make ourselves look like the fish, the fresh fish that you can find on the shelves in Waitrose, dear. Prawns. Oh, how can anyone eat those? They think... <laughs> As the legs come off and the towel. Oh, the noise does my head in. You can actually hear people breaking the legs off prawns, can't you? Disgusting little things. They're all curled up like that, aren't they? Little things on the plate like that. Oh. Frozen prawns travel 6,000 miles to reach us. It can take a year for them to be defrosted and so. 6,000 miles taking a year? Blummy, is someone walking them across? Where are they coming from? Indonesia or somewhere like that? That's a long time, isn't it? A year to travel 6,000 miles? I reckon I could walk that in less. Bread, you'd be surprised. Don't let the in-store bakery fool you. Most supermarkets bread is already made with frozen part-baked dough that could be up to a year old. Carrots! I do like a carrot, don't you? Oh. I don't peel them anymore. Anyone not peel carrots? I don't, you know, shh, 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 don't do all that. Oh, there's someone at my front door. Let's see who it is. Probably the post lady. One moment, please. Let me just check my Wi-Fi camera there. That's it, the post lady. Oh, there she is. I can see her in the background there. You can see her just walking past the other houses. There she is. That's, that'd be my letters arrived. I do hope there's a check in there today. Things are getting desperate here. They really I haven't eaten for weeks, as you can see from the weight loss. Uh, carrots can be up to nine months old. They're often washed in chlorinated water before being stored at uh, freezing to prevent decay and sprouting. Mm -hmm. Lamb. Well, lamb. You're not too bad with lamb. Only two months for lamb. British meat arrives in shops roughly four weeks after their... Those poor little lambs. Why are you eating those poor little lambs, boys and girls? You say, oh, look at the little lambs running around the field. Oh, aren't those chickens cute? And then you kill them and eat them. What's all that about? Can't you leave them alone? They haven't even lived yet. How would you like it if you just come out your mother and had your head, your throat slit and shoved into an oven somewhere? Awful. So there we are. Uh, New Zealand lamb is often about two months old. Now, bananas. You're OK with bananas. Now, I'm a bit of a fan with bananas. OK, I replaced as part of my Slimmer's World regime. I have replaced my crisps with bananas. Now, Gustav said that is not a good idea. Apparently, there are more calories in a banana than in a bag of Maltesers. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyone disagree with him? Then let me know. Shall we open a phone line? There's a phone line open there as well now if you want to call in at some point. Okay, up there on the screen. Bananas are still green when transported, usually from South Africa. Once chilled, they take a month to ripen. So uh, bananas are only up to a month old. And I've got to say, I don't like bananas when they're ripe. I like them just as they go from green to yellow. You know, that sort of transitional period, which is like, if you buy them green, you get about two days. <coughs> And once they've gone soft, no, not for me. My mate likes them better when they're really sweetened. But uh, I prefer them when they're still a bit hard. I don't like soft banana. I actually chuck them away. Aren't bananas cheap? When's the last time you bought bananas? A while ago? You get them all in the bag. You know, get a great big bag there. One pound, please. Ah, bargain, dear. Bargain. Unlike when you buy soap suds or something like that for the washing machine. God, that's expensive, isn't it, that stuff? Milk. 
You think that's milk's free? Uh, you think that milk is fresh? Up to three months old. Three weeks old. That milk is three weeks old. I have soya milk myself. Filtered milk can last up to three weeks if unopened, while fresh milk is usually at least two days old. It's not just come straight out of the cow into your glass, you know. Only way to get fresh milk is to have your own cow. And I think some of you have got one of those at home, haven't you? You've got your own old cow. <laughs> My nephews and uh, niece have a lovely old cow that looks after them. They really do, darling my sister actually my little sister darling she, she is known as the old cow but yes you get and get your own cow and then put your cup underneath it shh, shh, fresh milk what more could you want what about those sandwiches and eggs 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 could be up to a month old to keep sandwich fillings fresh eggs are boiled in bulk before being pasteurized to kill any bacteria so there we are you see that's how old your food actually is did you think it was newer than that? Mm, I thought you did. Some of your messages coming in uh, this morning. Let's have a look. Uh, Christina's there. Good morning, Christina, you lovely lady. Uh, on my way to get my free tempting cup of Waitrose coffee. Well, make sure you do some shopping in there as well, Christina. Do you remember when they were giving out the coffee left, right and centre and the tea? Ha! Ah, workmen were going in there, filling up the canteen with their free cups of tea and not buying anything. Good job they put a stop to that. You've got to buy something now, haven't you? Yes. Have a banana. Although it could be up to two weeks old. All right, darling. Uh, Mari. Good morning, Mari. Good morning, Mari. Can't believe I've caught you live again. Well, you won't catch me dead, darling. I hope not anyway. Although I am considering continuing this show from a coffin whenever that happens. We have a little camera installed or something like that. Uh, Joey says, did you see the BBC News the other day about Periscope? Yes. Periscope, I saw that uh, yesterday. Periscope is a similar thing to this. Like, this is Facebook Live. Periscope was the, was way before Facebook Live, and I was on it. And basically, you know, you did little shows like this, or um, uh, a, a lot of the Periscope, which is why I came off it, would be, like, people would, like, switch on their camera, and it would just be sitting there like that, you know, they're, they're the, Periscope like that. And they'd wait for a message. And then they'd, they'd say, oh, hi, Joey, how are you? And they went, oh, you're really hot, or something like that. And, and that's basically what it, what it has descended into. There are a few good things on Periscope. Uh, I know there's a chap on there <clears throat> who plays the piano. And he, he fires up his Periscope. It's ever so good. Fires up his Periscope, puts his camera near his piano, and said, hello, right, you know, my name's Chris. Uh, going to play some tunes for you today. Have we got any requests? And people would ask him for requests. And he would play the piano. Another lady does cooking on there. I think someone does the stars, you know, Aquarius and all that business. But on the news uh, yesterday, it is also being used uh, because young people are getting onto it. And they can, you see. This is the thing. This is the thing. Young people are not stupid. And I'm talking the 10-year-olds. They know how all this stuff works. So when you get someone come up and say, oh, you know, you've got to be 18 to use it, poppycock, poppycock, because they know how they know how to get around these things. The, the, the youngsters, the, the 10 year olds are not stupid. They know how to get their own Periscope, Facebook, whatever account uh, by getting over the, the, the whole I am 18 thing. I was on Periscope. I don't remember being asked for proof of age or... Um, uh, or, or, or a credit card or anything like that, because it's all free. Anyway, these youngsters are getting on it. Of course, you know, they're coming up and doing their little shows. And, and then, of course, paedophiles are chatting them up. Asking them to show them, you know, bits and pieces of themselves. So, yes, I did see that on the BBC um, website, uh, uh, on the BBC News uh, yesterday. But to be fair, to Periscope... <clears throat> I'm sure there are other sites that have this problem as well. How, how you do that, I don't know. I, I, uh, uh, and of course, one of the easiest things to do would be, OK, well, put in your credit card, although you won't be charged, put in your credit card number, then we know that you're not a 10-year-old, 12-year-old, whatever. 
You know, it could ask for a credit card, but there's nothing to stop that child from borrowing a credit card from somewhere and then typing in the number, is there? They know they know how to get around these things, and I'm not quite sure how you police this sort of stuff. These tech companies, you know, they, they, they wouldn't be able to afford to have tables full of people you know, waiting to see who's signing up and then, you know, checking them out and then, OK, well, we'll let you have one. Oh, no, you're too young. You can't have one. That wouldn't work, would it? I don't think that would work. They wouldn't be able to afford. They'd have to pay people to sit there and do that. Uh, what's that called? A moderator. I think it's called a moderator. I don't know how else you would get around that. But yes, indeed, uh, Periscope, as well as many of the other uh, online little video type things, dating things. I'm sure there are there are, there are young people on dating things and you're supposed to be over whatever age, 18, 21, I don't know what it is. How do you stop that? There's always, I think there will always be people who can get past the security. I mean, I wouldn't be able to get past, past the security thing because I'm not that intelligent with the computers. I don't know how to do these things. Young people do. They've been brought up with computers from primary school right up to now, so they can get past that. The trouble is, once they're on these things, paedophiles get on there. Oh, hello, little girl. Yeah, let me see your legs. And it's all a bit like that. So that is very worrying, that is. But we knew that was happening anyway. You know why? It just amazes me how this stuff comes comes on the news when we all know. Oh, yeah, of course there's children on there. It's a little bit like, I don't know, but about 10 years ago now, I never forget seeing on the television, you know, that the police um, were considering now, as well as doing the drunk, um, you know, the, what's that called? That thing you blow into to test whether you're drunk or not. You know, that little, you know, you get pulled over in the car and you blow into that thing to see if you're drunk, right? The police were considering doing a drugs test because they, and I quote, think there might be people driving on drugs as well as drink. Hello? And I watched this, and I, I think my mate was sitting next to me at the time, and we laughed at each other. I said, are they stupid or what? It's been going on for years. I tell you what, sometimes I drive through there's certain areas, actually. It's Shepherd's Bush, I get it mostly in Shepherd's Bush and also down the um, down the Euston Road as well, um, where uh, you're driving behind a, a, another car, OK, and you can smell the blooming smoke, that awful stench of funny cigarette smoke coming out of a car, not necessarily the one right in front of you, but certainly a car in front of you because it's a very, very strong smell and they're getting away with it because you don't see any police on the road now. How many times this year on the way home have I actually seen a police car on the motorway? Since January, about four times. They're just getting away with it. Good morning, Jerry, calling in. Morning, Jerry. Good morning. How are you today, all right? Yeah, not too bad. Not what, too bad. What are you calling in for this morning, sir? It's basically postcard because they only did a statement, didn't they? They didn't want to do an interview, did they? Really? Who, who didn't? Periscope. Yeah, Periscope did. Oh, they, they didn't. They, they didn't want a statement, not an interview. They weren't in pathetic. They weren't interested in talking about the problem, though. No, nope, no. Nope. Do you do you have it? Do, do you have any children yet, Joey? <clears throat> nope. You haven't got any yet. Well, only me uh, sister has. I right. think she's about, I can't remember what age she is, but she's getting a little bugger. <laughs> how, how old? Five or older? Uh, how old? How old else did I say, do you know? Huh? About four or five, I think, like that now. About four or five, so she wouldn't be on the computers and all that or anything no. like that. But, but they... she, can get, she can get on her dad's phone, though. She knows what she's doing. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she can. She you can know, get on, like, YouTube and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, there you go, you see. Five years old and she's able to do that and you think she can't get round security questions and all that exactly. business. They know what they're doing. Exactly. But, um, yeah, of course. I think this has been going on for years and, and no-one really looks looks at it and how to how to deal with something like that. I think you know? they need, like, an age limit on postcode, but then again, well, can, no-one can take that check and go ahead with it. I don't know if there is an age limit, but there was a there was there was a boy on there, um, in the Netherlands, I think he was, 
and he was very good. I, I don't, you know, I don't know how old he is, how old he was though. He might have been, he might have been seventeen, sixteen. Then again, right. he could have been thirteen. I'm, I'm not so good with. I'm quite good guessing adults' ages, not so yeah. much with children. <laughs> Right. Um, but he he would come on there and do a little bit of bit of a chat like I'm doing now. Actually, yeah, he was very well, good. Yeah. He was very good. I'm not saying that I'm very good, but he was very <laughs> good. And he'd put some music on. He'd have a little dance like that, a little turn around. And he was very friendly, very friendly. Yeah. Whether he was old enough to be on there or not, or not, I don't know. Um, I don't know how well children are, but when it comes to getting on the computer and all that. They're, they're very good. How how good are they at detecting a, pe a, 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 a pervert? I mean, how good at that? You know, everyone, of course, they're all taught in school, you know. Oh, don't yeah, talk, of course, yeah. Don't talk to strangers and all that business. But when it comes to being online, how good are they at, at, at almost recognising that, hang on, there's something not quite right here. Um, on a similar type of thing, when I get a dodgy email in from some bank or something, oh, we've got problem with your bank, please enter your details and reset yeah, your passwords and all that. Yeah. I, I, I've never been tripped up by one of those. Never, no, never. But you can understand how people are. Certainly yeah. people, I mean, I'm 54. Uh, those in their 60s do have, a, a lot of them have a little bit of a problem with computers. They never, I mean, I never had a computer at school. I've learned it all as as things comes along, and I, I'm actually pretty good at stuff now. I, I never, I've never been scammed. I'm, I'm not, sh I'm not saying that I'm anyone who is scammed is stupid. I'm not saying that either because it's very easy to scam yeah, people. Very easy to do it when you say, oh, you know. I mean, I remember an old lady I knew. I don't know if she's still alive, <clears throat> but I used to see her down the swimming pool when I went to the um, leisure centre. And uh, she said, oh, you never guess what happened to me the other day. I remember her telling me this. She got a knock at the door and said, we're from the water board. We've got a bit of a problem with the water um, around here. Could we come in and check in the kitchen? And, of course, you know, she opened the door. She was about 85 at the time. They come in. Wow, by me. And this bloke's in there. She, and, and he said, and so, of course, the front door is now open. And um, two blokes came in. And he's walked in the kitchen and with his foot started banging on the floor. Oh. And he's like, bang, no, I, I, can you hear that? That don't sound right to me, John, or someone like that. And, and John says, oh, I'll just pop outside. So he's left there. The other bloke's still in the kitchen with her, banging his foot on the floor. Uh, and uh, then... I think she got a bit suspicious. She said, let me just go out into the back garden, got out into the back garden where her neighbour was, and she summoned him quickly, and he jumped over the fence, and these two blokes ran straight out the door. Oh, my God. You see, that's another, you know, just another scam. Uh, and I think yeah. elderly people are tricked more easily. And, no, of they, course, yeah. and it, I know it's, you know, whoever gets scammed, it's bad. But if you're old and you're scammed for all your money... You won't get that back. I mean, if it if it happens when you're young, oh. it's bad enough, but you've got time to make it up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. it's a terrible thing. And I just wonder um, how, how clued up these young people are. Are they taught at school, you know, to watch out for scammers online and things like that, do you think? Hmm. Possibly. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, thank you very much, Jerry. Aye. A pleasure always having a chin wag with you, sir. And I'm really you. pleased that you're not dead yet. And that's made me very happy. <laughs> and stop writing notes about me. <laughs> Cheerio, Jerry. Here we are, my friend. Bye-bye now. There we are, Jerry on the line there. Uh, some of your messages coming in there. Uh, Gustav says, I only need to stand next to you and look younger and thinner. <laughs> thinner? Well, maybe. It's the fat that hangs around, though. That's the trouble, Gustav, isn't it? You know, you may have got thinner, but it, then you've got the flab to get rid of. Actually, Gustav runs. He does a lot of running, didn't you? I used to run years ago, and I enjoyed it, but my knees started uh, uh, playing up a little bit. Good good journey to work yesterday, I have to say, last night. Only took me an hour and four, 35 minutes last night, and I think that may well be because the school's an hour on holiday. I'm very, very pleased, which should mean I get a fairly good run for the next six or seven weeks, right up to uh, the beginning of September, when suddenly the roads jam up again. And here we are, about, what is the date today? Twenty. Oh, we've got another week of July yet, haven't we? We've got another week of July, then it's August, then it's blooming September again. 
God's sake, where's it going? I said to you the other night, now that I've got two nights off a week, which I elected to have, um, I find that I thought the time went quicker when you were working all the time. Not the case. It's even quicker now. I, I feel sometimes like I'm hardly doing anything at all. The only bit of work I do is here, chat to you. <laughs> so on a Monday, I work. Then I have Tuesday off. On a Wednesday, I work. Then I have Thursday off. Then I work Friday. That's already gone. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Then I've got another night off again. I don't feel like I'm doing anything. I really don't. And the time is going even quicker. I can't believe how far we are through the year now. And I keep saying this to you. Quicker and quicker and quicker. So does that mean, I mean, if there's anyone out there perhaps who's retired, does it go even quicker when you've retired? I thought it would be the other way around. The more you work, the quicker it goes. On the other hand, I'm doing jobs that I enjoy, aren't I? You know, if, you know, fair, fair comment, fair marks. Yeah. If you're working in McDonald's or, I don't know, in an office or something like that, doing the same thing all the time. Presumably that blooming clock doesn't rip, doesn't move. Would that be about right? What's it like? Are you are you, are you in a job that you're just sitting there watching that clock? Oh, you know, I've st I sat there watching that clock for an hour, for, for eight hours and only two minutes has passed. Is it a bit like that where you work? Phone number 0208144 3477. 0208144 is my local London number. Don't forget, we've got the card coming up a bit later. The cards are coming up a little bit later, OK? Don't worry about that. That's still to come. Now, I'm thinking of doing something else. Um, you remember we were recording a show for Upload Radio. Do you remember that? We were generally doing that every Saturday, and I stopped doing that. And uh, the reason I stopped doing that, I found it a little bit restrictive. Um, at the moment, we're chatting on Facebook. Like, I say anything I want, anything I want, within reason. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's common sense involved. I would never, ever in a thousand years want to offend anyone. That is the truth. I do have a sense of humour which people of my own age will, will probably get, even a bit younger, certainly much older. Start coming down sort of around the age of about 35 and you start getting into a different territory there. You do. They think differently. That is that is the truth. A lot of people think differently. And as you go right down to about 18, oh, no chance at all. They haven't got a clue what I'm going on about most of the time, those people. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It's just an age thing. That's how it is. OK, so I found it a little bit restrictive, <clears throat> plus the two 29-minute segments, which I managed to do, no problem at all. But I thought, oh, I don't, well, don't know about this. I'm thinking of doing a weekly music and chat show. So a little bit of chat. A little bit of music, a little bit of chat, a little bit of music. Once a week. Once a week. Now, if I was to do this, and it would be going on the uh, uh, a DAB radio station as well as online. At the same time, on the same day every week. Now, I don't think the day would bother you. It would be like a Monday to Friday, I think, something like that. But what time would you suggest that that show went out? If I did a little music and chat show, just an hour once a week. I probably wouldn't stick to any sort of genre of music. I think I'd play right across the board. Anything from like today, although I've got not a clue what's in the charts at the moment. I have no... What is number one in the chart? Anyone know? Let me have a look here. <laughs> BBC charts. I don't even know what's in the charts at the moment. What's at number one? Will I even know that? Wild Thoughts. DJ... Khalid, what's that like? Let's have a little listen. When I was you, all I get is wild oh, yeah, that's all right. Quite like that. And what's this one? Number two. Despacito. 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 Yeah, like that. Like that. Number three. Unforgettable French Montana. Oh, well, the music's not too bad at the moment, is it? That's fairly unoffensive. So what time do you think... Uh, would be a good time to do a one-hour music and talk show every week. If you could put a little message on there, then I'd be grateful of that. It would be a day, probably a day. To, the weekends tend to be quite busy on this particular radio station, but I could probably get, like, every morning, uh, once, once a week on a, I don't know, on the Tuesday at 10 o'clock, 
or or a Tuesday at four o'clock or a Thursday at three o'clock in the afternoon or seven o'clock at night. What time do you think would be a good time for me to do a music and talk show on the radio? Uh, put a little message on there. There wouldn't be video like this. There'd be a bit of talk, probably quite a lot, but but music as well. I'd be fed with jingles and everything. And I did used to do this. I've done this on a few re- uh, radio stations. I used to do the overnight show on Liberty Radio, which was on um, uh, in London years ago. I did overnight, 2 till 6.30 a.m. God, oh, it was great, though. Because at that time of night, the, the management, they're all asleep. They're not bothered what you're doing. As long as you don't offend anyone, they're quite happy. Any suggestions on a time that I could do that show, then do let us know uh, as a little message there. Or you can call in 020 8144 3477. 020 8144 3477. Now, what about this dirty old cow? You ready for this story? Look at this. In the mail this morning, a woman come under fire this morning, came under fire. Uh, from the television programme this morning. You know that one. Yes. Um, After she confesses, she only changes her bed sheets once every three weeks. Dirty cow. Dirty cow. When things are hectic, when it becomes four weeks. Four weeks. Oh, my God. Can you just imagine the stains and things that must be there after that? that time? Because we all leak a bit, don't we? We all leak a little bit. Some more than others. Don't you? you? Do you leak a little bit more than others, do you? I know you do. Don't lie to me. I know you do. Which end? That's the problem. Which end are you leaking? That's the question. Uh, this woman from Birmingham. Oh, it says, say no more, darling. I don't even need to go on with the story. As soon as I saw Birmingham, I know what sort of person you were, my love. She bravely welcomed the show's consumer expert, Alice Beer. Oh, we like Alice. Is she the blonde girl? She's quite nice, isn't she? Uh, into her home to air her dirty nick- her dirty laundry and inspect her mattress for dirt and bed bugs. Have you seen a picture of bed bugs? Oh, they're ugly bastards. Oh, they're evil. Are you still with us, Adam the Plumber, by the way? On your way down to Maidstone or have you lost us yet? I'm dying to know. Um, But when she informed Alice about her habits, those watching at home were quick to brand her lazy and, and I quote, a dirty cow. You see, it's not just me saying it, it's everyone else. Oh, can you imagine not changing your bed sheets for four weeks? Disgusting. A rent kill they even had a rent kill expert in. A rent kill expert was called in to clean her mattress and told her they would be full of dust mites, sweat and skin cells. Not my mattress, thank you very much. I have a mattress protector, thank you very much. Oh yes, a mattress protector. But you've got to watch that as well. There's no point in leaving that. A mattress protector available all over the place, especially Amazon. One click ordering. Click. And a new box arrives the next day. Ooh, but I remember I got my new plants yesterday. Four great big boxes in the garden waiting to be dealt well. I've opened the box. I've taken them out of the boxes and given them a good water. But I bought um, four massive boxes of plants because they're just going out of season now. 256, no, 500 pounds worth of plants for 40 quid. That's not bad, is it? But they're not massive. But they've 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 kind of gone now. If you see what I mean, they will have flowered. So for next year, well, I don't know where I'm going to find the space. Actually, I've got two. I bought two boxes for my mate, so they're twenty quid each. Two hundred and fifty quids worth of plants for twenty pounds. Uh, so I've got thirty six plants to find room for. God knows what I'm going to have to start digging up the lawn. Well, no, but at least there's no dust mites in. Not like this dirty cow's mattress. Oh, imagine having to have a rent a kill man come to your house. Do, can they come in disguise? Rent a kill people? I can't be having a bed bug van outside my front door, my love. God's sake, what would the neighbours think? That's the thing. It's bad enough, Babe Station Pearl, who lives down the end there. She's seen all sorts of people come into my house because they have to walk past her door. I've often seen her net curtains twitching. Her net curtains twitching. Twitch. Is anything of yours twitching this morning? I bet it is looking at me, isn't it? Eh? 
Um, the Rent-A-Kill expert revealed a bucket of murky water to Karen, which had her screaming in shock. Ah! <laughs> that is just shocking. Absolutely shocking. I can't believe how much dirt was in there, Karen responded. Equally horrified. Well, of course it was dirty. You don't change your sheets, you dirty old cow. Those watching at home were equally as shocked. Oh, yes. People are just lazy. <coughs> <coughs> not changing their bedding regularly. Once a week at least. Come on, once a week. I'll be honest with you. I have gone over a week before. I can't lie to you. I have gone over a week before, but not very often. In fact, today the week is up and my washing will be going in there. I tend to wait until it's not... Actually, it probably won't today because it's going to rain, I think. Um, but I tend to wait until it's going to be a sunny day. Then I wash it all. Sometimes it's less than a week. My mate changes his bed clothes every couple of days. I mean, he's got that OCD. Oh, God, he's always running around with a hoover or a duster or something like that. Who doesn't change their bed for four weeks? Ah, oh, and what the hell would you admit to it on national TV? Asked one stunned viewer. Let's have a stunned expression. A stunned viewer asked this. Karen explained <coughs> she'd lived in her home for 27 years and while her and her husband sleep on a mattress that is roughly three years old, her son Joey had been sleeping on the same one for 12 years. Asked by Alice how long she would leave putting fresh sheets on, Gigi gingerly admitted, I would leave it three weeks, maybe four, when things are hectic. Question is, boys and girls, how often do you change your sheets? Why don't you tell me now? Call in if you want... 020-8144-3477 is my local London number. We have Skype as well. The Skype in is United Kingdom. So I've just realised there's no Skype up there, is there, on the screen? Do we need the Skype up there as well? I think we do. I'll do that for the next show, OK? How often do you change your sheets? Obviously, in a bed, you're going to find sweat, you're going to find dead skin, and there's going to be bacteria. One of the issues we have are dust mites. They are only tiny between one and one and a half millimetres, and they can move down beneath the bedding and get into the mattress itself. No, you need a mattress cover. You need a mattress protector. This is not something to be ashamed of. It's just the reality. It is to be ashamed of. You must shame people for doing that. It's disgusting. Disgusting. Good morning, Tony, who says, uh, don't you wish they would change that good morning theme? No, I like that. Don't you like the good morning theme then, Tony? Perhaps something like something grand like Grandstand used to be. We used to like Grandstand, didn't we? Huh? Ba, ba, da, 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 that one. Yeah, Grandstand. Huh? <laughs> Oh, gosh, it's just awful. Anyway, that's the uh, bed story, boys and girls. <clears throat> Are you ready for the card yet? No, should we leave that till later? No, we'll do the card in a minute. We'll do, we'll do the card trick in a minute, boys and girls. Finally on the show today, some more excuses for you not to go abroad on holiday. I'm trying to get people... I'm, I'm on a mission here. I'm on a mission... To try and get people to stay in this country on holiday. No worry about airports. No worry about being ripped off by a taxi from your airport at the other end of your hotel. No worry about losing passports. No worry about losing tickets. And no worry about that conversion rate for your money. Conversion rate? Yeah, the conversion rate for your money. How about this? Talking of money, in the mail this morning. British holidaymakers face painful holidays as airport exchanges offer the worst rate ever at just 88... Oh, dear. Hang on a minute. Oh, my, 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 um... Oh, damn, that's crashed. Okay, that means I can't scroll down. Oh, I think I've got too many tabs open. Oh, hang on. No, no. We're away again. Here we go. Here we go. That's it. Where's that one? There it is there. Is that? Yeah, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's, that's all right. Yes. Uh, airport. <clears throat> Where it is now? 
British holidaymakers face painful holidays as airport exchanges off the worst rate ever. They're now offering at the airports 88 euros to the pound. I mean, the last time I went, I think I went to, um, oh, it was to Euro Disney last year, wasn't it? Yeah, we got about one, 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 did I say 88 euros? No, 88 cents. That's euro cents to the pound. That's not even a euro to the pound if you change up at the airport. Now, when you go away on holiday, the airport is the worst place possible that you should change your money up. You should always, always get your money before you go on holiday. And I know so many people, so many people over the years who have told me, um, I've said, have you got your money? Yet? Oh, no, we're not going to bother until we get to the airport. It's the worst possible rate you can get is at the airport. The best ones are when you send off. Uh, the post office do it. Post office do it. You can go to the, go online and the post office will give you rates. And you need to do it in advance. All this rushing around at the last minute. It's like, it's like getting a train. You know, if you want to go to Birmingham today from here, probably cost you a couple of hundred quid today. If you want to go in six weeks' time, probably cost you 40 quid. Always, always in advance. And it's no different with the... Um, uh, exchanging money. Don't leave it to the airport. <clears throat> the story says, travellers flying out of Gatwick, Luton and Birmingham yesterday were being offered less than a euro to the pound, the worst rate in eight months. But they weren't as unlucky as those hoping to change their money at Cardiff Airport, who received just 88 euros to each pound. I mean, you have, that's nothing. You're going to get such a shock when you go abroad. We're used to going abroad and thinking, oh, that's really cheap. That's Not anymore, it's not. Certainly, I mean, Disney isn't exactly the cheapest place to go, but when we went to Euro Disney, we thought it was horrendously expensive. Not just expensive, horrendously expensive over there back in November. Well, it's, it's even worse now. It's much worse. You better have a big pocket. Not only that. Has that put you off yet? No, not yet. Well, what about this one? What about this one? Airlines, Jet 2, Jet 2 this is, airlines have started charging passengers to ensure that they can keep hand luggage with them in the cabin. They're charging people for hand luggage now. <clears throat> Jet 2 has bought in a fee to guarantee that cabin baggage does not get put in the hold. Prices start at £2.59 per person per bag each way. Meaning a couple going away for the weekend would add an extra £10 to their fare. I mean, it's every little thing, isn't it? Why do you still want to fly anywhere, boys and girls? Have a nice holiday in the country somewhere. Go up the Scottish Highlands, I highly recommend if you want something quiet. Or Butlins, if you've got children. Go to Butlins for a week. You just get in your car, drive two hours, and you're there. Ryanair does not have a fee for hand baggage. Only the first 90 passengers on the plane are guaranteed to keep their bags with them and the airline charges extra to board first. That's Ryanair. As families jet off for their summer holidays this weekend, good, I can move around on the roads now. <laughs> the fees are likely to infuriate passengers already frustrated with having to pay for add-ons such as choosing their seats. Whiz Air... Another low-cost airline was this week forced to scrap the £9 fee for large cabin bags following a backlash from confused customers. Gone are the days, says someone from Money Saving Expert. Gone are the days when passengers pay the headline price for a flight. Uh, people think will be, uh, a lot of people will be quite annoyed by this, especially because you're doing it yourself. You're carrying a bag on the plane yourself. I can understand the size restrictions, but people will be angry at having to pay extra for the privilege. And it is outrageous, isn't it? <clears throat> it's absolutely outrageous. Every little thing now on the train. And I'm surprised. I remember the story years ago, of course, um, from uh, Ryanair, uh, where someone had said that Ryanair were going to start to charge using the toilets. Of course, that didn't happen. But that's coming. I'm telling you now, that is coming as well, isn't it? It really is. Tony says, I'm sure people go on holidays abroad for the thrill of the stress and drama. Do you think so, Tony? I, I hate it. I hate going abroad, all that mucking around on the planes and all that. 
oh, I can't stand it. Does my head in. So I don't go away anymore. Not even on a short haul flight or anything like that. So there's another couple of um, examples for you, all right, of reasons not to go on holiday. All right, we're going to do the birthdays uh, now, boys and girls. Today's birthdays, here we go. Ian David Price, karaoke host over in the southeast of London and the southeast area of the country. Happy birthday to Ian today. It doesn't say your name, Ian. Remember, you're down that Sydenham place. Happy birthday, Ian, okay. Uh, Stephen Eckett, 51 years old today. He enjoys the karaoke stream, isn't he, Stephen? Happy birthday to Stephen. <clears throat> Patrick Ami. 45 today. Happy birthday, Trap Patrick. David Parker is 51 years old today. Looking very, very colourful in that photograph, David. Happy birthday, sir. Uh, Jay Foley. Hello, Jay. 24 today. Uh, DJs. I don't know if you still DJ at Colours, do you? In uh, Basildon. Oh, I hated it there. I really... I, I managed, I think, six... Was it, was it last year or the year before? It's a while ago now, isn't it? I was DJing at this place called Colours in Basildon and it was upstairs and in a big hall and I just I just hated it. I don't know what it was. There's just something not right in there and I, I just didn't like it at all. But are you still there, Jay? I hope you're well. 24 today. Happy birthday, Jay. Uh, Paul Michael Overington, D another DJ. All the DJ's birthdays today, isn't it? Happy birthday to you, Paul. All right, my love. Uh, Peter Mellon, it's his birthday today. And Denise, Denise Wyndham, 45. How did you get to that age, my darling? 45. Where are the years going, girl, eh? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday to all you lovely people today. And uh, finally, and then today on the show, boys and girls. Oh, good morning, Craig. Did I say good morning to you, Craig? Morning, Craig. Finally, today, I'm going to now reveal the card that I showed you earlier, boys and girls. Are you ready for this? You've been waiting an hour for this, haven't you? Here we go. I'm going to close my eyes again. Going to close my eyes again and turn it around. Okay. I'm not looking. I'm looking the other way. That is the card you chose, isn't it? That is the card I showed you earlier. Am I correct? Am I correct or not? That is definitely the card I showed you, isn't it? There you go. You see, I can do tricks as well. I can... <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us on the show today, boys and girls. It's been a pleasure, as always. If you want to send in a um, uh, an email, <clears throat> uh, perhaps a little bit later, uh, after we go off about anything and everything, then feel free to do so. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Well, if it's not raining out there, I better start putting my plants in. There's 36 of them to put in. <laughs> I think I might have overdone it a bit. See you again very soon. Enjoy your Saturday. Cheerio now.